Hi, my name is Ken Lasserson. I'm a citizen scientist who happens to have a Master of Science in Stats and being a science teacher, a bunch of other stuff. I've been working with a physician in Europe a bit to get her up to speed on using my site. And this is a walkthrough largely for her, but for anybody else who is interested in knowing how to do better analysis of the results from fry from microbiome etc so i'm going to just do a walkthrough of a old sample and show what is available and also explain some of the logic involved the usual starting point is you go over to log on you type in the login you wish to use and then you click Log on, which takes you to the example page. Now, what I should first do is try introducing you to some of the issues involved. And the best way of seeing it is by clicking on my biome view. And what that will do, it will show you all the bacteria reported, what your count is, and relatively speaking, where you are. If you do a hover over, you will see that you are, for example, here in the above the 94th percentile. 94 out of every 100 people have less than you, and you're somewhere near the very top, which means that chances are you have a overgrowth to use the um, vernacular of this particular bacteria and would probably want to reduce it. So if you scroll down, you see it shows relative position. You also have some one where you're lower, in which case you are in the bottom 6 to 13 percent. And nope, there's nothing which is at pretty much zero. So that gives you a snapshot. Now, we at this point in time, I should point out a couple of things. One is we have a bunch of check boxes here, which we'll come back to later. What the checkbox does is allow you for suggestions to absolutely customize how you're going to build out your suggestions for modifying. So you can go and take what you know and run with it to be absolutely specific according to what you think the problem is. Now, we have the bacteria shifts high and low. My belief is that these shifts actually causes symptoms and connected with symptoms is that the chemicals produced by the shift also acts as a catalyst for some medical conditions which means that if you reduce the catalyst the condition should get better okay let's go back to the main list here we'll be coming back to the bottom view later to build the custom suggestions the next item which i suggest you always take a look at is your sample quality Sample quality indicates how good a sample you are compared to other people. And at this point in time, we see that 40 people have a sample. We have 40% with samples around where you have, but up here is where you really want to do. And up here you find okay, that we have 900 samples, etc. So the top samples are sitting at this measure, which is somewhere about 85, 88, and you are sitting way down here with a relatively low amount. So your sample was not the best samples. By best samples, it means that the number of total bacteria counted was, was small, which means that you would probably miss a lot of items which are underrepresented to. Also, it means that the accuracy of the numbers is going to be less because if you measure 10 people for a ask a question, you'll get perhaps two out of 10 same particular answer. If you go to 100 people, you won't get exactly 20. You could probably get somewhere between 15 and 25, 28, and you get a more accurate measure. You go to 1,000, you get much more accurate again. So having a small number of a small number of bacteria detected in your sample generally means your accuracy goes down. So it means in this case, I would suggest you may want to do a resampling and not put much, not put a high value on 
to sample but we'll go on and see what else we can get from the sample information so the next thing i want to take a look at because it opens up a understanding of what i'm talking about when i say bacteria generate a lot of symptoms i'm going over here to probable symptoms i click here and what we have is we have a variety of symptoms listed. Now, on the right, we have a magic number. That is how many bacteria have we found having a very strong association with this particular condition. And next here is how many do we have an exact match for? We have one where we have four and four, 17 and 11. Once you start getting down to three, threes, twos, and ones, things become much more unreliable. We are close to the edge of being really significant. But let's take a look at the first one to do a bit of understanding. I click this one. It will now go over and show where it has found significance. Now, everything here has significance somewhere less than 0 0.5, sometimes very low. For example, uh, 0.02, a 2% significant level, which for most studies would be accepted, but I'm going conservative here. And if you just take a look here, notice all of the bangs where you your value and that reported by other people are dead on. Here we have another one where you're not dead on, but boy, are you close. Again, you're close. Other cases, there's difference, but this is an oddball one where you will see that there seems to be two humps and you are in the second hump and there's a big valley between. That is the nature of the microbiome and I can get into a mathematical explanation of what's happening. Other cases you are at the extreme, but a lot of cases you have exact match with what was statistically significant like a five percent chance but then make the threshold for being a match happening by random but you go down and you see hey boy do i have a lot of explosion here now when we go down up to the next level we see we have again on the ones which are really significant we have a beautiful match for, for a bunch of the others which are <coughs> um scroll up a little bit um we also have a match for ones which are statistically significant but not the absolute highest quality so and even when we go down to even fire resolution we find well we find we have some matches and we have a, some misses so that is basically how we predict symptoms how well do they match we use the ones with this background color to make the determination but when you go over here you can make a better subjective interpretation of how well you match in this case boy do you match you got everything lined up um you feel oddballs but oddballs given the fuzzy nature of the data is exactly to be expected and let's go back and take a look at another symptom Let's take a look at this symptom. We have all four matches, absolutely smack there. Here we had one which we had excluded because it wasn't strong enough. It's also a match. And then we have two which aren't matches. But again, we are no, we know that we could get some false positives, and these two are likely false positives. And at a higher level, we have nothing which are extremely significant. However, we do find ourselves sitting right next to the peak value for every single one of them. And at 16 buckets, we just didn't have enough data to make predictions. So that gives you a idea. It may take you a little bit of time to digest that. If you go down to something like oh, age 20 to 30, I click over here, we'll find that we have a match. It's interesting, there, there is a lot of age matches which work out. And in this case, you see that we have a fair number of dead on hits. We had one which is very strong, 
and this seems to be indicative of people in a certain age range. Your microbiome ages and changes and the ratio changes as time goes on. And in this case, um, this person was probably around 30, if I remember right, when she did it. So she is close to the edge and the prediction seems reasonably accurate. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight matches of the probables. And we have a bunch of close. We haven't had one, uh, two, three, but that is a pretty good match ratio for what we found over the entire population of people who supplied their symptoms. Okay, let's go back and go on to, to another aspect. What we want to do is make sure we enter the symptoms. Symptoms is how I made the probable symptom predict, projections, predictions, and we see that they tend to be very accurate. Let's go in and look at entering symptoms. This is what you should do. You click age, and this person was age 30 to 40. We had a match for age 20 to 30. Uh, okay, so I believe she was in the younger and bottom of the age 30, and it was a match. Imagine that. We actually had symptoms and the microbiome in agreement, and we can go through and identify other issues, um, and you can just go through, put check marks by whatever you have, uh, bloating diarrhea, whatever. Now, things like bloating diarrhea, we may not have a cystic significant pattern, but diarrhea sometimes has a wide variety of bacterial groups which are associated with it, which means getting the significance is a challenge. Also, if we don't have enough samples with diarrhea being marked, we also may not be able to detect predictable patterns. So the prediction is based on you, a person entering the symptoms after you, you add upload the data. Okay, the next one is enter your bio metabolites. I have a separate video on how to do that. And I'm just going to take a look at what the screen resulting data screen looks like. So in this case, you have to do some work, a fair amount of work. You have to copy your numbers from your biome across to this input page and it goes down. What you will find is sometimes you will find some surprises when you do it. Like for example, this particular one, which deals with the um, support for phages um, in your system and you have a very high average, your system appears to be geared for producing a lot of phages to fight particular types of bacteria. One is what the average person value is. All these numbers are coming from Ubiome's black box, which probably takes the cakes pathways to make use of them to evaluate using raw data. So what I have not done yet, is, because we don't have enough people having put in the data yet, um, being able to get any interesting results from the set of data. But it's important set of data to put in so that we can make more discoveries about why certain conditions happen. Let's go back to changing samples. And let's go over, now that we have sort of gone back and forth, we want to do a quick peek on a couple of other things. Um, but before there, often the first thing people want to do is get suggestions. What do I need to change, etc. All of that is nice geek stuff dealing with the microbiome. But what I really want to do is get suggestions as to what I should be doing. Very simple. You quick suggestion goes and produce a list of things you should do or take. All the lists use the same logic or engine. We just have the ability to tune it in many, many ways. In this case, for the um, quick suggestions, I've gone and constructed what I deem is probably a good starting point. 
so then you don't have to learn a bunch of stuff before you can start figuring out what to do or get confused by stuff. So here it gives a list of suggestions. I know this person has chronic fatigue syndrome. And the interesting thing is from the microbiome, I see a whole ton of the typical B vitamins, which is recommended by um, chronic fatigue syndrome physicians for the patients. And they recommend it because it reduces the symptoms. Why does it reduce the symptoms? In my humble opinion, it reduces the symptoms by inhibiting overgrowth bacteria, which you have, which is exactly what this, this list is, is a list of the um, substances which will reduce your high or very low. In this case, as you saw, almost everything was high, high bacteria amounts. So we have some wonderful things happening. Now, we have a couple of things here, here, which you may scratch your head. It's the one in the world is that I realize many people are not physicians or scientists by training. I try to make this a little bit simpler. Things like vitamins are easy to identify. Thyme, which is a herb, is easy to identify. You can get thyme oil, or you can get thyme supplements, or you can make your own supplement. But if you go down here and you have these lovely things, you click on one of them, takes you to an informational page. And here is where the fun begins. Food containing this favorite And we click that. And what we see is, okay, these are the foods which contains this favorite note. Where do I get this data? All from public sources. Basically from the Department of Agricultural Research Service as well as the EU equivalent. So from that information, they have downloadable databases. I've downloaded it, imported it, and then start tying all the bits and pieces together. And if we go back and take a look at the other one, and we again have a list of food container. Before we go there, let's take a look down below. And what we see is a list of other things that this particular item is computed to be able to help so if you have some other things it may motivate you even stronger to make use of it down below is a list of all of the bacteria it impacts and how it impacts it so we have a rather large number of bacteria there and the program goes and optimizes things against all those bacteria but let's see what type of food this is in Peppermint dry, 0.96, and pure lemon juice. So you now probably want to have lots of lemon juice, but probably you want peppermint tea or peppermint oil or other things. Peppermint flavor is not what you usually want because it won't have the same um, flavonoids in it. You actually want to deal with peppermint extract of some form or a peppermint tea. Okay, let's go back and look at the analysis page. So we have things you want to increase or take. Next, we have things that you want to decrease or stop. Here, you may hit a emotional block because often on news groups, they advocate certain particular types of diet as helping. And in truth, it will help some people. Whether it helps or not depends on the microbiome. This site intent is to try to reduce the amount of randomness in what you try and to increase the possibility of anything that you do will actually help. So we have Mediterranean diet is a um, stop. We have another that type of diet is stop. Red wine, I'm sorry, you have to give it up. Actually, since you have chronic fatigue syndrome, chances are you can't drink red wine. But um, that's because Red wine will feed the overgrowth, so it works and makes the amount worse, which probably explains why you can't have any alcohol. Navy beans, we have one particular type of prebiotic is flagged as being problematic. CRA, which often is taken by some people based on folk tales. Pomegranate, uh, which is often advocate strongly in some health stuff as being the magic cure-all, read brand, pea fiber. Okay, so those are things 
which we compute that you should decrease. Again, these are suggestions. This is not gospel. These are simply things with higher probability of being helpful or higher probability of being harmful. The next section down is probiotics. Probiotics is always a fun area. The first thing you need to know is all probiotics do not help everybody. Some of them will actually hurt and hurt by because what they produce or what they kill will negatively impact your microbiome. So we have a lot of studies on what the bacteria in probiotics has in terms of impact on different bacteria. So we take that information, take a look at your shift, I said, oh, Joy, hey, we can classify probiotics into one of three classes based on available knowledge. Actually, the fourth class is we have no information whatsoever if it will have any impact on your microbiome, which is the fourth type of probiotic. The first type is called positive impact, and it means that these um, probiotics will cause your overgrowth to decrease and there's nothing in the literature for the bacteria strains involved stating contrary so in other words these are a high positive risk aspect keyword no known risk of bad impact the mixed impact is where we have some of the bacteria impacting some some of your shifts positively and some of them negatively and that ends up being a little bit of a um, joyous task so if I click on one of these we'll go over and we'll see what this particular probiotic contains and then down below we will see what it increases and what it decreases so we take all of this data against the 200 micro um, types of bacteria you have and we do some shuffling with some AI engines and expert systems and come up with a glorious list of whether or not it helps or hurts. So let's go back and take a look. So we have a long list where we have a mixed impact. Now the numbers here are not amount of impact. It is simply a count for how the estimator for how many things it will help and how many items it will hurt not how much most of the time the studies indicate increase or decrease but there's no relative comparison so we don't know just negative nine point actually will help or will hurt we are assuming everything has the same impact which we know is a false assumption but we have no better data to work on we are working at fuzzy information so this whole long list are things which uh, there's some risks to doing it. It may help, it may not help, but you are gambling. It's like Russian roulette. You may get lucky or you may not get lucky. So let's try to avoid springing the barrel with Russian roulette. The negative impacts are ones which we know that the impacts of the, these bacteria will have a negative on your mixture of bacteria and the shifts which you have. So we have a whole bunch of them which are spelled out. If you go to, um, uh, let's say organic free, primal one, we'll have up here what is in it. And then we have the details down below. This does not match back explicitly to your microbiome. It's just simply showing what this item does of the how it matches together is done behind the scene computational and the numbers gets messy and then last we have no known impact these are items which none of the bacteria in it is known to impact any of your highs or your yields so these are neutral if you're taking them already keep taking them they probably have no negative effects on you or is no negative effects that we know of and it's again a matter for you and your professional medical provider to make determination of all this site does is provide information it, it makes suggestions it does not prescribe what you must take 
everything needs to be reviewed by a knowledgeable medical professional before you make any changes of diets or supplements, etc. And down below we have the next one. We have favoroids food suggested, which is things you may want to eat or add to your cooking. <clears throat> Sweet basil, cumin or turmeric, um, papaya, thyme, which we saw up above, cloves, basil. And then we have down below, we have act, actual favoroids. I have actually been so nice to some people who are suffering from mast cell stabilizer is I've added in a comment where we know that this particular thing helps with mast cell issues to help you filter food choices better. Uh, if you take a look at uh, one of them, like Nutrin, again, it goes over. And it, now you will see a list of everything that contains it, a big, long, long list. But more importantly, I start the list by the amount per gram. In other words, something like uh, raw apple without skin contains a very small amount. But if you go up to um, juniper berries, you have a much greater amount. Uh, time is, again, a high there. Uh, Radicho raw is, is high there. Um, my wife, in her suggestion, has that, and she's busy chewing it with positive effect. So what we have is, if you want this particular item, which will help mast cell stabilizing, here's a list of the items you should be looking for. Again, all I'm doing is tying bits of data from a whole variety of sources together and trying to resolve the um, problems of filtering through all of the data. Okay, and we can go on and um, caffeine. Oh, okay, so keep drinking coffee or tea as the case may be. Um, again, everything needs to be checked by your professional medical. I have a note at the bottom because sometimes we have contradictions between studies or the fact that I'm not able to be painfully detailed in putting in the data because you end up getting into a forest of blackberry bushes. So you may see the one particular probiotic is a, it's a take and another one is to avoid. The reason is different studies have different results. We do a weighing based on the studies and what the studies report. If it's something like GG, which we have, we track explicitly because they're so well studied, we may get one set of values saying so and so. But for those which don't specify GG, we may get a different set of results. And that may be because the GG um, species has certain unique characteristics which the rest of them don't. Again, you will get contradictory suggestions. That is for your medical professional to look at and figure out what the best course is, given all the other factors of your health conditions. Okay, so that it takes you through what suggestions look like. This is quick suggestions, and we'll come shortly to custom suggestions. So let's go back here, and we'll go over to custom suggestion. And here we have we have listed all of your material samples. In this case, we only have one, which makes life nice and easy. We have an option here of saying, okay, I want to also talk in bacteria, which I am totally missing, but which it seems that everybody else has. So I could set that to, let's say, 95%. So if 95% of people have this particular bacteria and I don't have it, include it in my suggestion because I don't want to be left out. I want to be like others. The next one is your suggestions. The 3% is the most extreme values, which is what you saw in the quick suggestion. 6% means that you are expanding. So higher but not extreme are picked. And 9% is there. I've also added in one dealing with lactic acid producers um, because some people have lactic acid issues. 
and this just makes life easier. I don't have one for mastic cells because the research just isn't there sufficiently. And custom selection is a sweet one because it is what I've just added and allows you to can pick the bacteria you want to play with. Okay, to better understand this one, if we go over and click bacteria selections, we will see what would be picked in each one and what the values we should be using. In other words, how much we weight something to be positive or negative. Generally, a positive number means we are too high and we are going to try to reduce it. A negative number means we are too low and we don't get negative numbers until we are actually at 9%, which agrees with the chart. What is missing from here is the custom suggestion. So let's go back and see how we make custom suggestions. So let's go back to change samples. I'm going to go over to my microbiome view. And we have our checkbox here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I want these items to be computed for. Um, I don't worry, Acromancia. Excuse me, I like Acromancia. Um, we go down, we take a look. At, okay, I want that one particular one to be taken care of. Um, I want all those to be taken care of. I'll mark all the subspecies you see. Oh, definitely want that group taken care of. And down low, okay, I want to increase that one. I want to increase these as a whole. I want to increase that one. So we have a variety of there. We can ignore things or we can include them. Um, for example, I just want this particular part of this family included. Because that seems to be the only one that has a real problem. Uh, this one, which I don't have any idea what it is. So you go down and you check all the ones you want. You now go and click. Here and now it will go and add it automatically. And when you go to advanced suggestions, there are your hand picked items. And you see some are negative, which are the ones which you're too low on, and some are positive, which are the ones you are high on. The weighing here will change over time. I'm having to do some fancy mathematics to figure out how to get a balance between all the factors involved. But the pattern that will always be there is the weight is how much too high item is and negative is how much too low item is. So we now have our custom suggestions and I'm going to go and do a custom suggestions here. And I'm going to say, okay, I just go 110. I want 30 items. And I want to make sure I get rid of everything, so I'm going to increase the count here. And I'm going to say, hey, tell me what the suggestions are. And the suggestions are spelled out. Probability estimate is basically one with a one has the greatest potential impact. Then everything is scaled relative to its impact. Um, so everything is a relative to whatever is the best. You have particular type of probiotics. You have a Ayurveda um, concoction called Tripala, which is a very strong antibiotic, by the way. Um, we have Maronism, which is a probiotic from Japan. Um, Actual Cassi, which is also, um, you can get it, that in something called like Cute, which comes in most grocery stores, chicory, green tea, etc. Item to decrease. Well, we have red wine, cranberry bean juice, black currant, um, red algae. This is one of the sort of seaweed stuff, uh, high fat diet, low protein diet, aspirin, baking soda, vegetarians. Okay, so if you're vegetarian, I'm often sorry. But fortunately, it's important as well to be low. Again, these are suggestions. Notice that all of the suggestions in this particular case is less than 0.5 and up here we have a whole bunch of things which are much higher in general 
I would suggest working from the highest value down downwards as far as you are comfortable with after re reviewing with your medical professional probiotic mixture. We have a different one. We have Mary Reason sitting there, 15.1. Mary Reason is actually up here on your to-do list too. And this particular probiotic contains only that particular item. And then we have different impacts. Again, if you have limited budget or whatever, work from the one with the highest possible impact. Some cases you will see some items may not be available on your account. Mary Reason is available pretty much worldwide, fortunately, via Amazon site. This one is specific to Australia. This one is specifically to Spain. This one, I think, is UK based, Fridge Active. Um, and again, if you click through, you will see what is in it. This one contains two things like Tupacillus brevis and Tupacillus fermentum. And here is what it impacts, what it increases, what it decreases. You will notice that in my list, which I had selected, I had mentioned I don't want to decrease acromancia because I didn't want to decrease it. Then this probiotic comes in fine. It increases this more. So it is a sweet one. It also decreases some of the ones which I flag as the Privitala, which I want to reduce. So it decreases it. So in other words, all the suggestions you can trace back through multiple steps to what you actually have in your microbiome. Okay, and so let's go back and we have the mixed impact, which is a very long list. And we only have one thing on negative impact, number four, two, which is a E. coli probiotic, and no known effects listed there. Then we have all the favorite only foods, as we have. We have, for example, barley shows up, which, which is uh, one of my favorites. Um, oregano, favorinoid there, and we have pyrimidine and quercetin showing up. And if we want to go in and take a look at where what contains that particular food, we see it. And basically, um, we have almost everything with soy. We notice also beer, and you notice it's zero. Actually, it doesn't mean it's truly zero. It means that it's smaller than 0.01. There's a very small amount in there, but because I'm rounding, because most people don't want to see 25 decimal places, I am rounding to just two decimals, so a bunch of zeros will appear occasionally. Okay, so let's go back to custom suggestions. Over here, we have choices, as in what you want to include or not include. We could go and go over into the Alternative world of prescription drugs, which if you are prescribing pharma, um, prescribing physician or nurse practitioner, you may want to take a look at. And we now take a look and specify which type of antibiotic would have the best effect and which one will have negative effect. So down there, and some of these are familiar. Um, to people who have done antibiotic pro protocols. And so it just attempts to rate them. If you go into one of these and click, you'll see, uh, first of all, all the trade names. Uh, every country seems to have different names. And it indicates what it will help. But then it goes and spells out all the bacteria where it's impacted. And you notice sometimes we have two studies, three, four, five studies. If you go over here to source studies, it would list where this information is coming from. Um, so you are able to track down to actual studies why suggestions are happening the way they are. Okay, so we went from the organic healthy side to the evil side and we saw all the results. That's how everything back again. Uh, if you select show buying choices and let's go and uh, exclude a couple of things. And 
when we click this, you'll find that it's changed what we have underneath it by country, and the country is determined here, where you can get or buy this particular substance. Um, some cases there's nothing like there's no listed source for this particular probiotic. It's the Nielsen study, so it's available in a research environment for barley, uh, plantarium. Here we have a single one. Uh, notice this is not recommending this particular brand, but I'm saying, hey, if you want lactobacillus plantarium, absolutely by itself. You go, you can click on that. In this case, it goes to the term. The price here, don't be shocked, this is for 50 grams, which is a very high volume at 400 billion per gram. You are getting trillions of viable things, and the price per viable CFU is much cheaper than almost anything else. So, that sticker stock price, but the actual cost over time will be a lot less than going to um, pre capsulated one. So, again, just something to keep in mind that um, sometimes things can be cheaper. So, we go through and uh, where I have information known, I do a link to it. Um, for example, here's the number one. Takes you over to Swanson side with the usual advertising and cultural. You can get cultural as a bunch of other places, but it's just a list of where it comes to trickery. So it the intent of uh, putting things this way is to see if you the frustration of trying to find stuff. Select the appropriate things by country, and it will take you to some Amazon pages where you, you get what appears to be correct, and then everything else is there. Okay, so that is how custom suggestions work. Um, you can go and also apply restrictions to which bacteria. In other words, whatever you are selected up here, we filter out and get rid of things which don't match what has been reported in medical literature to match. So let's go and take a look at what this means. Let's go back to change samples, condition templates. So if you click that, you will get a lovely diagram or a lovely table with lots of things, all sorts of different colors. And the probability of randomness of you matching the, the profile is given there. And if it's very low, it's, it's very dark because you're in a dark place. Uh, bad humor. Okay. Now, what we have here is literature reports 12 different bacterial types. You have two of those bacterial types. Specifically, the chance of it happening here by random is about 13% chance. So it's probably is happening by random. Others, you have high match and low match. And the catch is if you have a low match but no high match, I would say in general ignore it because the absence of bacteria is not unusual. You know, everybody has the same bacteria, so if you have none of a particular one, it's not that concern. We have a number of high matches and low matches, then you may want to go and take a look. Let's take a look at one. We have depression, we have four and five, which is nine. So there's just nine out of the 31 bacteria matches. But the problem is different studies report different results, and we put all the studies together, and you won't get any study showing all 31 bacteria. So we have to do some fuzzy logic AIs to figure out is this or isn't this significant? The fuzzy logic puts it down as 0.1%. So we took depression. And we have here, we see what the results are. And you can see where you have the matches and the values. Now, if you're interested in which study it came from, 
especially when the high matches. You click here, take you over to the actual study. So again, you get to see that this, the suggestions, the information is all coming from a traceable source going back. Now, up at the top, you can change the percentiles. And the reason we do this is very simple. We have some bacteria. Okay, the studies usually says group of people with depression has higher assist bacteria than people without. What does higher mean when we're dealing with quantitative numbers? So that's being 1% higher, 5% higher, 25% higher. And the, it doesn't say whether or not everybody with depression has it. It's just that the average, as when you, when you sum up each individual, some of which may be lower than the average of the average group, some of them will be higher. The grand average goes up, and that leaves things very fuzzy on how to interpret it. So we give you the ability to define high as six, as okay, are you in the top 6%, top 12%, 12, 18% or 12, 24% in terms of where your values are. And as you go through, you will notice that the number of matches change, go up to 18, go up to 24. And in some cases you will find that there's only one or two at 6%, but when you hit 24, this is a complete solid wall of matches. Whether or not you have depression or not, it's a medical decision. What this simply is an indication of whether or not there is a risk of getting depression. Um, nothing more. So let's go back and take a look at. Okay, uh, let's go all the way back. Okay, and. So what we are doing here is saying, okay, these are the things. So if you go and let's say where we are higher off. We, okay, we have Parkinson's disease. Interesting. Parkinson's disease is probably the combination of DNA and microbiome interacting together. So we have some high matches and some low matches. And so the interpretation again is for stepping with medical professionals. You can go through and see the studies. You can start doing a lot of reading, and your medical professional hopefully will do it for you and come to conclusions. But now, if you go back to change samples, and go to advanced suggestions, and we're going to do custom suggestions as we did before, and we are going to now filter it. Okay, first of all, let's go and get a reference set. This is before we do any filtering. Now we're going to filter it by Parkinson's disease. So from whatever we selected here, we will only pick those which has abnormalities for Parkinson's disease, and we'll see what the changes are. And so that is what comes out from one. Um, a particular probiotic is number one. And that particular probiotic is now number two on the other list. So you will notice that there are differences, there are similarities, but ranking and ordering change because we are excluding certain ones of the custom selected bacteria by putting on a Parkinson template. If you go and put up a different template, like for example, asthma, and see what happens. We make, we fortunately in this case, we get very similar, but the template filtering can be helpful for trying to treat a specific diagnosed medical conditions. You can select the top 9% says asthma, and click show suggestions and we keep getting very consistent results which is very good um but we for item to stop we get some surprises we get asked from we get a particular artificial sweetener being high on the list we 
don't have the Mediterranean diet being on the void. We have gluten-free diet being on the void. And particular type of prebiotics, some particular amino acid. So the effect is it changes. Now, as you can see, you will literally get hundreds, if not thousands, of different suggestions lists. Suggestions lists are based strictly on what you decided to be important. What you decide to be important is then fed few and ground few with a lot of mathematics and a lot of fuzzy logic and a lot of artificial intelligence and some expert systems to come up with suggestions. Suggestions should always be reviewed with the medical professionals. I don't know which suggestions are the best. My quick suggestions is my best stab of a starting point. From that, you can go explore and see what changes as you play around. You have custom suggest ability to do a custom selection of which bacteria you want to pay attention to. And that gives you a tremendous amount of power but with that also means you have a tremendous number of possible choices. Okay, let's go back and go on some more interesting things. So we have covered quick suggestions, symptoms, microbiome site, advanced suggestions. Okay, next thing is we are going to look at abnormal end products. This is very much like the you buy on metabytes, except this is done from my system using information I've extracted, which is incomplete. So when you click that, you notice the word experimental. And that is because I don't have adequate data to feel comfortable. But what it does do is show the outliers where you have unusual values. And it says, OK, taking a look at everybody's out there, grinding them through, we find that the typical value where half the people have less than or more than was this value, 25% above here, maximum value everything is here, and you have just whopping big value. So the bacteria which are producing this particular chemical, you have a high predominance of. Uh, for example, lactic acid, you have you know top high, which for chronic heat syndrome is not unusual since it's been proposed that the Lactic acidosis is a cause of chronic fatigue syndrome. Being a high producer of lactic acid would be consistent with that diagnosis. And that basically gives you a bunch of information which is best digested and explained to you by a medical professional. In some cases, um, you may find agreement or disagreement with um, your biome staff. For example, JBA is reported by them. We seem to have different data sources. Of course, they don't make their data sources totally publicly available, so nothing more I can do about that. So that gives you your end product experimental, which is informative, but it is something for medical professionals to broke, to digest. But from that information, we make an extract and look at core supplements. And basically, this goes and uses the same data, but extract very selective items, indicating what your level is compared to the typical level. And you can see there's some things like, for example, um, B12, your production level of B12 is low. And wait a minute, we were supposed to be supplementing with B12. Hey, and your condition is chronic fatigue syndrome, and having have, and needing supplemental B12 is well established for most patients. Guess what? Your microbiome says the same thing. Uh, vitamin K, you have lower production. You may want to supplement with some vitamin K. Other ones, you have probably no need to supplement with, uh, like GBA. You probably have no need to supplement with for the purpose of that. If it shows up in your suggestion for microbiome, that's a different case because that is being used to try to suppress a particular bacteria overgrowth. Okay, so 
core supplements, which is simply saying, okay, these are common supplements. How much is your back, gut bacteria producing compared to other people? Oh, which ones should you definitely supplement? Okay, so we have condition template we cover, probable symptoms we cover, my biome view, um, Bacteria Explorer Plus is something which we actually saw when you looked at probable symptoms. But if we go into it, we now have a list of everything there. And if I go down, and the, we were age 30 to 40 in our symptoms. And we have that actually as a choice here, 30 to 40. We have 81 samples with that age range. I'm going to include that. I'm just going to make that one choice, click that. And down below, we see how well all microbiome matches that age group. And we have a very good hit. We have one, two, three, four, five, Six of the bacteria are dead on. Then we have others where we are the extremes. Again, remember, false positives are expected to show up here. Why? Because we are looking at 361 bacteria and 5%, anything which is 5% is shown. 5% of 361 is 15. So we would expect randomly 15 items to show up there by random chance um and tell why nothing is marked as significant but on in terms of a subjective evaluation of those items which is about 15 we have six of them which are exact matches which is more than one would expect by randomness um some of them for example we have very low in the high one in where any one of these free lower quantiles would be a almost appears to be a match or almost a match here so or just when almost became where the peak was again this is a visual display of what is going on if you want to know what the actual numbers are just hover 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 over over it and you see what the numbers are 59 to 185 the number was 23 so that's sitting there so again it allows you to explore. You can now go and add number of symptoms. For example, we had diarrhea being an example. And we only have 26 people in this age group with diarrhea, so I'll mark that. And five choices below. And now we see the two choices are sitting here. And we have only one significant happening, which is here. One strong significant. However, we have half of the possible matches. You have exact match. And the other one, you're right next door to it. So the bacteria profile from other people for being a 30 to 40 year olds with diarrhea is a pretty good match. So in other words, these particular bacteria are the ones you really want to work on, and especially just one, which you probably have no idea what in the world it is or how to correct it. So make your life easy. Everything is clickable, and you can click for ages. We'll go over, it gives you the magic number, gives you the link over to source information. For example, uh, I use have used DataPunk a lot. And data punk will go over and give you all sorts of description of it. it says what it produces what enhances it what inhibits it and whatever information is available data punk that's a nice summary adam is does has an excellent job of sites well recommended we also have more information which we can get from the NCPI, which gives us the information. And what is particularly interesting is we have PubMed links from here. So if you want to see what PubMed says about this particular bacteria, for example, what medical conditions are impacted by it or what is seen with it, 
for example, we see that, okay, people who have strokes, um, oh, these are TIAs, transitory strokes, uh, have a change of microbiome. And many chronic fatigue patients do have uh, many strokes. So we can go there and we can go and see what is to be said and we can proceed to read, read through um, and somewhere there in there makes mention of this particular bacteria. So you don't have a shortage of reading material using this site. Uh, genome gives you a little more information. when it loads. And this information is far more directed to a heavy duty microbiome geek. Okay, and we have interaction with upper bacteria system science. Remember up here we have interaction which is which is being stretched for literature by Adam on the data punk site. Here we have our own way, and we'll come and we'll take a look at this shortly, but we'll do it through the front door, which we'll go back to the um, sample page. We have the mind bike review. We use that to, to create hand-picked bacteria to use for suggestions. Bacteria Explorer Plus, we were just in, which allows you to look at your symptoms and just walk them to see how well your symptoms, bacteria, and your bacteria are matching. In this case, we found that 30 to 48 year olds with diarrhea pattern matches your microbiome pretty closely. Quality, which is how accurate the information is. Abnormal end products, which is experimental, which leaves us with two. Why and why citizen science? Okay, why? Let's go over there. And as you see, there's a video waiting there. And what we have here is a real busy graphic chart that bounces around to keep it entertained. Um, remember the, uh, okay. So now we can go here and, okay, and where were we? We were looking, ah, uh, uh, we were looking at this one. Oh, uh, no, we weren't really looking at. Okay, that's good. Ah, this is what we were looking at earlier. And what we have here is we have this bacteria is very high. Color here is incorrect, and it's a bug I have me with the nail. And what we have is this one is high and it feeds these bacteria when it's high and slows some other bacteria. So what you see here is the interaction be between bacteria. So in other words, overgrowth of one or in some cases a minor overgrowth of one can cascade through the system because this causes something else to change, which causes something else to change. And you can modify the information here, and the information is coming from Data Punk. So this is a visual representation of the information he has on his page. Um, and what we have also is um, the size of the items is a log of the number of bacteria you have. So bigger ones indicate, or larger fonts indicate more. But the alternative one, which it comes from our site, which is we went in and we looked at the data of how bacteria seems to play well with each other. And we ended up producing a our own version, 
which at times can be simpler. Um, and this is based on the actual statistics from our site. So if we go down and try finding our old friends, and we actually find there's nothing which we have found to be statistically significant there. It's, it's interesting, one is done possibly by studies which are taking a bacteria in isolation from everything else and saying, oh, this helps, this doesn't help. Versus this is seeing if there's any apparent relationship looking at the in situ situation. Okay, the last thing I want to take a look at quickly is over in the far right, it says taxonomy. You have 248 different types of, or groups or taxon, uh, bacteria, of which you have none which are very rarely seen, you have four which are rare, that is 2% of the population will have some of this particular bacteria, four of them, sparse you have nine, infrequent 50, uncommon 37. So that gives you a profile. What will sometimes happen is you see these numbers are relatively low. Zero, zero is not uncommon. But if these numbers are five and 10, etc., it tends to suggest that you have some rare bacteria which are corrupting your whole microbiome. Um, basically, the evil bacteria come out of the woodwork. There was a nice um, study from Norway of uh, people under stress who were done before and after. And basically, the rare minor taxonomy blossomed when the person was under stress. So, so these rareness factors is actually important. The this is sometimes is some. Some people attempt to simplify it is you want to have a diverse microbiome, which is correct, but you want diverse in the common ones, not regardless of what they are. You don't want to be diverse because you have a whole bunch of rare bacteria, which we know nothing about, running around in your guts. So that basically takes us to the end. Um, we do have couple of quick features. Again, if you're doing with uh, working as a physician with patients, you may want to go up here and change the name and proceed to update it so that um, you can keep track of which patient is which, which makes life a lot easier for you. But in saying that, I should point out again, this site is not HIPAA compliant. Um, a HIPAA compliant site could be made, but there's a good amount of hours needed to make a HIPAA compliant. Uh, as a professional developer, I know the choice. I'm angst of making, jumping through all the hoops required. We have no association with Ubiome 5, American Gods, Xenogene, or any other labs. We simply process the information from it. We are a nonprofit site. Um, we occasionally we have received <laughs> gift certificate from Amazon. We're not opposed to it. Um, we fund everything out of our own pocket. No venture capitals behind it. So uh, don't expect any scandals from us. Everything is designed to be educational and completely open science, not just. Um, open source, open science, so that everything can be traced back to its source or origin. You can go and interpret things differently, or in some cases, as some readers have done, they reread some of the links and discover, I think I may have, made, they suspect I misinterpreted how things were phrased, which is not unexpected given the medical studies tends to be obtuse at the best of times and sometimes lacking in grammar so that you have no idea what the correct antecedent is. Um, we have a whole bunch of other features up here which I should just touch upon. Um, underneath reference, you can go and look up any particular bacteria you want. Uh, you can see how much data we're working from 
and here it gives compete breakdown by um, by bacteria just so information we have 88,000 drugs being listed by their trade names cough 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 we have 90,000 relationships between something that modifies things and the bacteria and actually this is technically incorrect because we have more for example we have probiotic to bacteria and the bacteria is what is modifying it but we have lots of bacteria um, probiotic we have 174 probiotic mixtures which are online this is this is some maintained information um, and we're currently running on about almost 1300 citations to PubMed uh, we have in product picture relationship we have 7,000 just a whole ton of miscellaneous stats for those who are interested in numbers changing your microbiome gives you some things what we have here is a all the probiotic mixtures and what is in each one of them and what we know about them is a histamine producer or actually we only list not histamine producers if we don't know we assume it is a histamine producer does it reduce lactic acid does it specifically produce the lactic acid histamine and lactic acid are significant for some conditions particularly chronic fatigue syndrome which was my original focus on bias um we have the food with flavor noise and flavor noise which we saw pages there so you can go directly there if you want um we have some general links to um pages giving description as to um oh this gives you the list of particular things in a group for example if you click using supplements it will list all the supplements which i have in a database and you can now click through and see what it is um and you notice i've added in the ability to check for interaction and let's take a look let's cop copy this because we need to do it i'm going to go over to the allen institute which are fun folks i've met with them several times and trying to build out my thing so we click here and we end up having all sorts of um interactions from a variety of paper um so we have oh let's see hydrocortisone um and we see that it interacts with hydrocortisone etc so what we have is again the intent is to provide the information either extracting it and shoving it in the ai engine or providing links to the source where you can get more information again I must thank the Allen Institute, their AI, 